In our previous video, we talked about bases for vector spaces. In this video, we're going to use that basis to build a coordinate system. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves what bases are. A basis for a vector space V is a set B of vectors B1 through Bn such that the set B is a linearly independent set and the span of the vectors B1 through Bn is the whole vector space V. As I mentioned in the previous video, if you have a basis for a vector space, the basis vectors are sort of like the building blocks for that vector space. Any vector in your vector space can be written uniquely as a linear combination of your basis vectors. And this fact is called the unique representation theorem. Suppose that a set B of vectors B1 through Bn is a basis for a vector space V. Then for each vector x in V, there exists a unique set of scalars or weights C1 through Cn such that x can be written as a linear combination C1 times B1 summed up through Cn times Bn. These weights are called the b-coordinates of x, and the b-coordinate vector of x is denoted as x with square brackets around it and a subscript b, and it is the vector containing the b-coordinates c1 through cn. Let's prove this theorem. There are two things that we need to show. First is that any vector x in our vector space v can be written as a linear combination of b1 through bn, and the second thing we need to show is that the way we write x as a linear combination of b1 through bn is unique. Well, we know that x can be written as a linear combination of b1 through bn because b1 through bn is a basis, which means it spans v. And if it spans v, then every vector in v is a linear combination of b1 through bn. To show that there is a unique way of writing this linear combination, we're going to start by assuming that x can be written as a linear combination of b1 through bn in two different ways. So let's say that x is c1 times b1 summed up through cn times bn. Suppose we can also write x as the linear combination d1 b1 summed up through dn bn. Now if we take these two equations and subtract them, on the left, I'll have x minus x, which gives me the zero vector. On the right, I can group things together, and that will give me c1 minus d1 times the vector b1, summed up through cn minus dn times the vector bn. Now, since the vectors b1 through bn is a basis, I know that they're linearly independent. Now, the only way to write the zero vector as a linear combination of linearly independent vectors is if each weight is zero. So this tells me that the weight c1 minus d1 is zero, the next weight c2 minus d2 is zero, all the way through to the end, the weight cn minus dn is equal to zero. Therefore, we know that c1 is equal to d1, c2 is equal to d2, all the way through to cn is equal to dn. So what have we shown here? We started off with the possibility that x can be written as a linear combination of the vectors b1 through bn in two different ways, one with the weights c and another with the weights d. In the end, we concluded that each of the weights c has to equal the weights d, which means that there really isn't two different ways of writing x as a linear combination of the basis vectors, there is just one unique way. And that concludes the proof of this theorem. Next, we'll look at the geometric interpretation of coordinate systems with respect to a basis B. When we write a vector, say in R2, we have two components. The first component tells me how many units to go over in the x direction, and the second component tells me how many units to go up in the y direction. I can also interpret this as how many units do I go in the direction of the standard basis vector E1, and how many units do I go in the direction of the standard basis vector E2. So the vectors that we've been writing in Rn have been vectors written relative to the standard bases E1 through En. Let's illustrate this in R2. So here I have the xy plane, and here's the vector E1, which is 1, 0, and here we have the vector E2, which is 0, 1. Now what I can do is overlay a grid on top of this. Now whenever I write a vector, say, v equals 3, 2, I know how to draw this vector 
by going three units over in the x direction and then going two units up in the y direction. So that vector would look like this. What we can do is also interpret this as going in the direction of e1 three times and then going up in the direction of e2 twice. Right, so the vector 3, 2 is 3 times e1 plus 2 times e2. So you see here the weights of the linear combination show up as the coordinates of this vector. Now what I can also do is just draw an arbitrary vector on the xy plane and I can tell you what the coordinates are by counting how many times I go over in the direction of e1 and how many times I go up in the direction of e2. So for example, let's say I have this green vector w. So at the moment, I don't know what the coordinates of w are, but what I can do is count how many times it goes in the direction of e1 and how many times it goes in the direction of e2. So from this picture, we see that it goes in the direction of e1 five times and it goes in the direction of e2 twice. So we can express w as five times e1 plus two times e2. Therefore, when we write the coordinates for w, we would write that w is the vector 5, 2. Again, the coordinates of my vector come from the weights in front of e1 and e2. Now, if we choose a different basis, then what we would have is a skewed coordinate axis. For example, let's consider the following basis for r2. b1 is the vector 1, negative 1, and b2 is the vector 1, 2. Again, let's try to draw a picture of this. Here is the xy plane, here is the vector b1, which is 1, negative 1, and here is the vector b2, which is 1, 2. Again, I can overlay a grid on top of the xy plane, denoting increments of b1 and b2. Let's try to draw some vectors in this new coordinate system. For example, let x be the vector whose b coordinates are 3, 2. Again, what this means is that x is the linear combination 3 times b1 plus 2 times b2. If I want to draw this vector, I would need to go 3 times in the direction of b1 and 2 times in the direction of b2. So following our grid lines, we would have the following vector. Now if we want to find out what this vector is in terms of our standard coordinates, all we have to do is compute the linear combination 3 times b1 plus 2 times b2. So I have 3 times the vector 1, negative 1, plus 2 times the vector 1, 2. This gives me 3, negative 3, plus 2, 4, which gives me 5, 1. So in our normal coordinate system, this would be the vector 5, 1, but if I'm thinking about this in terms of b coordinates, it's the vector 3, 2. Let's try another one. Let's say I have the vector y whose b coordinates are negative 2, 1. This means that y is the linear combination negative 2 times b1 plus 1 times b2. If I want to draw the vector y on my xy plane, I can use the grid lines and go backwards from the direction of b1 twice and then go 1 times in the direction of b2. So I would have the following vector. Again, I can find the standard coordinates of the vector y by doing the linear combination negative 2b1 plus 1b2. So that's negative 2 times the vector 1, negative 1, plus 1 times the vector 1, 2. So that's negative 2, 2, plus 1, 2, which gives me negative 1, 4. So this tells me that if I had a vector with b coordinates negative 2, 1, then the standard coordinates are negative 1, 4. Now let's try some examples where the standard coordinates are given and we have to try to find the b coordinates for the vector. Let's say that u is the vector 3, 0. What are the b coordinates for u? So let's draw the vector 3, 0 on the xy plane. Now if we follow the grid lines to get to u, we would go 2 times in the direction of b1 and go 1 time in the direction of b2. So we can write u as the linear combination 2b1 plus 1b2. Therefore, the b coordinates for u are 2, 1. Let's take another example. Let's say v is the vector 0, 3. And let's try to find the b coordinates for v. Drawing the vector v on our xy plane, we have the following vector. To find the b coordinates for v, we want to follow the grid lines and see 
how much do we go in the direction of V1 and how much do we go in the direction of V2. From our picture, it seems like we go backwards one time in the direction of V1 and forward one time in the direction of V2. So we might express V as negative V1 plus V2, which means its V coordinates are negative 1, 1. Let's try one last example. Let W be the vector 5, 4. So here's the vector w on the xy plane. Following the grid lines, it seems like we go 2 times in the direction of v1 and 3 times in the direction of v2. So w can be expressed as a linear combination 2v1 plus 3v2, which means the b coordinates for w are 2, 3. So that's it for this video. What we'll want to be able to do is convert from standard coordinates to b coordinates and back. So in our next video, we'll talk about how we would do this without having to draw a picture.